Okay, so when we talk about the goals for this project, we want them to develop their individual and teamwork habits and responsibility in studying, as well as their critical thinking, their curiosity and their interest. Also, develop basic technological competencies and initiate their use for learning. Then, they will use artistic representations with audiovisual proposals and lastly, know about the closest animals to human to know how to behave in an empathy way. When we talk about the ACAT framework in the academic part, the project will begin with an introduction with the vocabulary related to animals, like this. The teacher will present the new words and their meanings in Spanish and the students will practice saying and spelling them. Also, the teacher will explain the rules of the game that they will be creating. In the competence part of ACAT, students will form three to four people groups to create an interactive game about animals using three different digital tools. Here we would have Kahoot, Kemba, and lastly Padlet, where they will upload their final work. They will use the different tools to design their own game. In the competence part, the groups will present their games to the class and the rest will have the opportunity to create and share to their partners the final work they did in order to learn. This will be followed by a reflection on the learning process and the digital tools used. And then, for the development part, the final product will be an interactive game about animals created by each group, which will be shared physically with each other to play and enjoy, but also learn. Okay, how is this activity going to be? This activity will be divided in three parts, as we have three different tools uh, for them to use, the Kahoot, the Canva, and the Padlet. So first of all, uh, with the Kahoot part, we will introduce the topic of the animals in English and we will show some animals and images of these animals in order to let them learn and have visual support from these images. Then we will ask the students to brainstorm animal names in a period of two minutes and they will say as much animals names as they can. Then they will, we will ask them to create a Kahoot with the information they could get. Obviously, we will have to show them how to create a Kahoot, explain the instru instructions of this project. We will allow them to have time for creating these Kahoots in groups, for the, of course. And finally, they will share their quizzes with the rest of the class and the groups are going to answer the quizzes the other group may. Lastly, it is obvious that we will be discussing what we have learned about these quizzes. Okay, for the second part we will explain the students that we, they will be creating physical cards about animals. First of all, we will be showing examples of animal cards. We will ask them to choose an animal of the Kahoot that they did in the previous game and create a card with some data of the animal. This will be done in a Canva. We will show an example of how to create this card and let them time and give them time for creating this card. Of course, if they have any question, they can ask the teacher for some support because they may not know how to use this technology and that's what the teacher is here for. Then we could display these fact cards about the animals physically or in the padlet that I will explain in the part three. But obviously, when we are finished with these physically card parts, we are going to discuss the information we got. So for the last part, we will be using the Padlet for sharing the Kahoot they made, but also the fat cards they made too, in order to let the teacher evaluate their work and provide some feedback. So first of all, the students will create a Kahoot. Here you have an example that teaches basic vocabulary about animals. They will create their own questions and once the quiz is complete, they will share it with their classmates and compare results and learn. Students can play the quizzes at class or at home 
and the results will be automatically analyzed. So after creating this Kahoot, they will uh, use the Canva to create the animal fact cards. Here you have an example, here's the animal and here's the fact. So as I said, we will have the image, the name and the fact. This is what the cards should have in order to make a nice presentation. So once the fact cards are completed, the students will share them with their classmates by printing them or uploading them to the Padlet. But the Padlet, the Padlet is compulsory. But a nice way for them to learn is printing them and let them play with their colleagues in order to let them learn. So in conclusion, these students will have an interactive and fun way to learn basic vocabulary about animals. They will also be developing their research skills and their collaboration, collaboration skills. The final artifact of these animal fact cards will be a collection of all of them and they will be able to share them with their colleagues or even with their families. Additionally, the Padlet will be used as a tool for them to share the results of the Kahoot and the Canva. This can also serve as a way for the teacher to evaluate their work and provide them feedback. By using Padlet, the students will have the opportunity to collaborate and interact with each other in an interactive, in an interactive way, but also engaging. Okay, there are some ethical considerations the teacher should take in account. This person will ensure that all digital tools used are appropriate for primary school students and will provide guidance on their safe and responsible use. The teacher will also ensure that all images and information used in the games are appropriate and do not interfere in any copyright or intellectual property rights. The teacher, of course, will obtain parental consent for students to share their games with the class or in the website, as would be public. So, with that being said, I would like to share some ethical problems of each tool and their solutions. So, first of all, Kahoot! One potential ethical problem is, is the easy ways the students have to access harmful content during the quiz. To prevent this, it is important for the teacher to warn students that they have read all of the questions in order to not let them be harmful. Additionally, the teacher should monitor the quiz the students are doing so there's no harmful content in these questions or answers they will be sharing with their colleagues. The second tool, Canva, have some ethical problems like the students could be using images with copyright and to prevent this, the teacher should warn the students to use images that are in public domain or have a creative common license. And then finally, the third tool, Padlet, would have the ethical problem of the students sharing offensive or harmful content as, as is similar to Kahoot's ethical problems. To prevent this, the teacher could give guidance of appropriate behavior and respectful and being respectful with their colleagues when sharing their content. Additionally, the teacher can enable moderation settings to the bandit to review and approve any content before it is posted on the board. Okay, with all of that being said, I would like to say the added values of using digital tools. So the use of digital use will enhance the students' learning experience by promoting creativity, critical thinking and collaboration. Secondly, the use of digital tools will provide the students with an opportunity to develop digital literacy skills, which are essential in today's world. So, for the next part, it's your turn. Come, come. Okay, so how are we going to evaluate this task? A rubric will be used to evaluate the students with some criteria. Completeness, accuracy of information, creativity and design, and presentation skills. Each of these criteria will be evaluated on a scale of poor, fair, good, or excellent. The completeness criteria will evaluate whether the students have included all of the required elements in their project. If a student includes all required elements, they will get an excellent. If they are missing one or two elements, they will get a good. If they are missing three or four elements, they will get a fair. And if they miss more than three or four elements, they will get a poor score. The accuracy of information criteria will evaluate 
how accurate the student's information is about the animals they studied. And as I said before, if all the information is accurate to the research, they will get an excellent. Then, if most of the information is there, they will get a good score. With that being said, if not all the information is accurate, they will get a fair score. And lastly, if only a few animal facts is accurate, they will get a pure score. In addition to this criteria, the rubric will also evaluate the student's participation and collaboration with their group members, as well as their reflection on their learning and use of digital tools. Finally, this project will help the students build their personal learning environment by providing them with an opportunity to use digital tools and collaborate with their peers to create a fun and interactive game about animals. This will enhance their digital literacy skills and promote lifelong learning. Okay, so now I'm gonna explain from my point of view the four more important concepts that we have explored during this course. So, the pedagogical content knowledge refers to the specialized knowledge that teachers have of their subject matter and how to teach it effectively. It involves understanding how students learn and how to adapt teaching strategies to meet their needs. Through this course, we have explored various pedagogical strategies, including project-based learning, gamification, and assessment design, which helps uh, teachers develop and apply their PCK in the classroom. An example of this would be a teacher that has a strong pedagogical content knowledge in biology, might use inquiry-based learning strategies to engage learners, exploring the impact of environmental factors on plant growth by, for example, designing an activity that priors a students' interest, for example. Another concept would be digital literacy that refers to the ability to effectively navigate and use digital technologies to access, analyze, and create information. Through this course, we have explored various digital tools, and an example of this would be a language teacher might use the application Flipgrid to engage their students in listening and speaking practice. Then another concept would be learning management systems that refers to digital platforms that provide a framework for managing and delivering online courses and educational content. For example, a history teacher might use LMS platform like Aula Virtual to create an online course about, for example, American Revolution. And then another concept might be multimedia creation tools. It refers to digital tools that, are, that enable users to create and share multimedia content such as images, videos, and podcasts. An example of this would be an art teacher that would use Canva as a tool to teach uh, his students or her for, about art, about color theory. Now I would like to talk about the incompedo. What does it mean and the most useful things I have uh, learned in this course? So the Incompedo frame framework is a valuable tool for developing digital competencies in education. It consists of 22 competencies grouped in into three key areas. Information and data literacy, communication and collaboration, and digital content creation. Uh, now I'm going to talk about the specific components of the framework that I found particularly relevant. Information and data literacy is a critical competence for navigating the vast amount of information available in today's digital world. It involves the ability for search information, evaluate its relevance and reliability. One way to develop this skill is by learning advanced search techniques and proper citation methods to avoid plagiarism. Then collaboration and communication skills are essential for success in a digital workplace, where remote work and virtual terms are increasingly common. This competence involves the ability to use digital tools for collaboration and communication such as email, video conferencing and social media. Developing strong writing communication skills and using digital tools can help develop this competence. Finally, digital content creation is an important skill for creating, engaging and informative digital content such as images, videos and audios. This involves not only technical skills but also the ability to create content that is both visually appealing and informative. Learning how to use graphic design tools and video editing software can also help develop this content. So for the question 5, I think the mark I earn uh, should be an 8, even though I have struggled sometimes with some tasks because I couldn't get the uh, the width of my partners, but I finally could. So I would say an eight would be appropriate. I think the most important role I've performed in this course would be the facilitator, as is the one who organizes all the group. And I think it's the most important part of the of the work in the group. Having a nice organization, I think it's the strongest point. And then the most challenging 
would be the role of a star because everyone is looking at you and at the end uh, all the work uh, your group have done is on your back and being a star means that you will have to demonstrate how hard your group has worked.